are going to tell the story of creation. Our story begins a long time ago, long before school started, long before third years were first years, indeed long before anyone in this room was born. Our story starts with before humans or animals or plants or any life that lived on earth. It starts before the earth was made, before time and before space. Our story is the story of the universe, and it is the story of us. It begins when there was nothing. Can you imagine everything being nothing? How huge is nothing? How dark is nothing? How cold is nothing? How boring is nothing? Now, out of this nothing, light was created. Well, now we're getting somewhere. This is better than nothing. But how did we get here? How do we get something out of nothing? That, for us humans, is one of the greatest mysteries, what scientists call a singularity. From this one singular point came everything we know. Scientists imagine that this single concentrated point, smaller than the point of a pin, to be infinitely hot and infinitely dense. It was so dense because it contained everything that is now part of the universe. It was so hot that the matter we see around us, earth, rocks, iron, gold, water, all existed as gases all in this one tiny point. And then, the Big Bang. But since scientists say there is no sound in space, perhaps you would, we should call it the Great Flaring Forth. In less than a second, this intense point exploded into the Great Flaring Forth everything rushing away from everything else, expanding. Imagine that. And the universe has never stopped expanding. It is expanding even now at this moment. Let's pause our story for a moment to consider the way we see the universe moving. It moves a lot like our own lungs. When we take a breath in and breathe out, Slowly take a breath into your body and feel your lungs expand. Breathe out slowly and feel your lungs contract in, in and out, expansion and contraction. These are the primal movements of the universe from which everything came into existence. We have just seen the expansion with the great flaring forth. Now, a new and powerful force begins to work with the universe, gravity. As the great flare expanded, gravity began to work by contraction, pulling matter together into clumps. Great clouds of the universe's very first elements, hydrogen and helium gases, were pulled together. These were galaxies. Gravity then squeezed some of these hydrogen and helium even more tightly together. More contraction and the stars were born. And stars, my friends, are, well, the stars of our story. Stars continually burn the first two elements that the universe created, hydrogen and helium. 
This is what our own sun is doing now. As stars burn, they expand larger and larger until the force of gravity causes them to contract, collapsing in on themselves. When they contract, they burn even hotter and expand even more. Stars repeat this process again and again, expansion and contraction. It is as if the universe itself is breathing long, slow breaths through the stars. Until at last, stars explode with one final expansion, throwing out clouds of stardust. This is called a supernova. Scientists tell us that this dust from a supernova contains all the elements that form everything we can see. Some of this stardust forms new stars. Some of this stardust becomes planets, including the rocks of our own Earth. Some of this dust is oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and other essential elements that make up the elements generated from all things, including rocks, leaves, water, giant sequoia redwood trees, rainbows, strawberries, <laughs>
or solid. Everything in the universe that we know of is either a gas, a liquid, or a solid. And which of these three forms the elements assume depends on how hot or how cold it is. Our sun, that beautiful bright star, took the form of a gas. In fact, our own Earth, for the first 100 million years of its life, also took the form of a ball of fiery gas. As our Earth cooled, it formed a solid crust around the outer part of its sphere. This allowed our planet to settle and cool. However, the Earth's core was still so hot that rocks there took the form of a liquid. For the next 400 million years, Earth was bombarded by asteroids, huge rocks hurtling through space. How could our planet become the place we know it to be today with all that chaos? Well, if you were being pelted by rocks, wouldn't you want an older sibling to step in and help you out? Yeah. We can think of Jupiter as our big sister. <laughs> Once Jupiter was created, the force of gravity from this huge planet pulled in asteroids so that Jupiter now takes the blows from objects that would otherwise smash into Earth. Thank you, Jupiter. And still, our planet would not calm down. Another law that the atoms of the universe follow says, if you are hot, you expand and rise up. If you are cold, you contract and fall. Well, that liquid rock core of our Earth had to rise up. During those 400 million years, all over the surface of the Earth, the crust was broken apart by the force of volcanoes. as if the great mother sun covered our young earth with a blanket so that it would be at peace. And peace did come. Clouds of dust and smoke from the volcanoes covered the earth from the sun for many years, and the earth cooled and settled. Water from the clouds fell on the earth and filled the craters and basins on its crust forming streams, rivers, lakes, oceans around the rocky land. At this point in our story, our planet has emerged from its turbulent childhood and is showing itself as a nurturing young adult with the capacity to become our Mother Earth. You can see in our journey of the universe, from the great flaring forth to the information, sorry, to the formation of the Earth, how things are becoming more complex and more interesting. When we continue our story, we will witness the most interesting complexity yet to be seen in the universe, life. <laughs>